Hello, hello, and welcome to the Healthy Up Human podcast. My name is Callie. I'm your podcast host, and I'm so freaking excited to have you here today listening to today's episode. This episode is going to be packed with so much goodness about how to get started on your fitness journey, how to level things up in your fitness journey if you've already been on your journey for a while now. And I'm going to share my story and my experience with being in fitness and teaching fitness for so many years now. Okay, so before we get into things, we always start things off with a little self check-in. So think of this as a time to just ground yourself and become aware of how you're feeling and let's set some goals, okay? So wherever you are, I want you to take a nice deep inhale through your nose, fill up your lungs with so much goodness, so much love for your beautiful body. And then on your exhale, slightly opening your mouth, sighing out, letting those shoulders just drop out of your ears, relaxing your face letting go one more deep breath in here growing a little bit taller this time inhaling in imagining confidence flowing through the bottoms of your feet all the way to the crown of your head and then on your exhale just sign out letting go of anything that's maybe holding you back in your mind limiting beliefs stress anxiety just choose to release it with your breath okay wherever you are i want you to ask yourself on a scale of one to ten how am i feeling today 10 being I'm feeling absolutely amazing, one being I'm not so hot today. And now we ask yourself, okay, why? Why do I feel like that? Maybe something happened, maybe nothing happened. Just becoming aware of if there is a cause, okay? And now I want you to ask yourself, have I drink water in the past 30 minutes? You know the drill if you've been listening for a while now. Grab your water. We're going to chug our waters and hydrate our hot pods in three into cheers to hydration my queen extra important in the summertime with all that heat going on okay and now ask yourself have i stood up in the past hour if you've been sitting down for a while this is your sign to stand up shake out the legs shake out the arms get the blood flowing in your hot bod and then you can sit back down or keep standing up because honestly standing up is a vibe And now I want you to ask yourself, what is something that I have been struggling in my life? So maybe something that's been going on in your mind, something that's been going on that's out of your control. Just like, what are you struggling with right now? And now I want you to think about one way you can make this struggle not as tough. So what's the first step you can take in making this struggle a strength? Sometimes you don't have an answer to that, but other times there is a solution. So like, let's say you've been struggling with motivation. Like what's one thing you can do to become a little bit more motivated? And that could be finding a workout that makes you feel good. And we'll get all into motivation things today. Okay. Now I want you to ask yourself, what is something that I love about who I am? It can be internal. It can be external. Just start to hype yourself up here. Think about something you love about you. And no, there is nothing that you cannot tell me there's nothing you don't like about yourself because there are so many beautiful qualities about you, physical and mental, and you just, you have so many amazing attributes and characteristics. So find one thing, okay? And now I want you to tell yourself out loud, I am a radiant and powerful queen. Affirm it, declare it out loud, believe it. Affirmations are really freaking powerful. And when we declare things, like they can come true. So the more you say it, the more you're going to start to believe it. Have you ever heard the term fake it till you make it? That is truly, it truly works, especially with affirmations. Okay. And final question, what is something that you hope to accomplish this summer? It can be one goal. It can be big. It can be small. It can be anything. Maybe your goal is to go surfing. Maybe your goal is to start a new workout class. Maybe your goal is to make a new friend. So just set your goal and maybe write it down, have it somewhere you can see it, hold yourself accountable to it. And just know that you are totally capable of making anything happen, okay? I hope you feel good. I hope you feel self-checked in and aware of just how you've been feeling. Self-check-ins are always a great way to reground yourself, especially if you feel like you've been kind of going through the motions in life. Your life's been crazy and you haven't taken time to just like check in with yourself. So today's episode, we're going to get more into this topic, but just for a little a little preview. I'm going to be diving deep into my fitness journey and I get a lot of questions about how I became a fitness instructor and my I, I feel like this question can be answered simply through my fitness journey and my story and then we're going to just, we're going to talk about all the things. We're talking about how to start your fitness journey. We're going to talk about 
how to become a fitness instructor. We're going to talk about how to figure out what workouts will give you the best results and just some tips that I wish someone had told me when I got started. But before we get into this, we always got to catch up because it's a new week. And if you follow along, you probably know that my life is big things are always happening and it's great. I feel like sometimes time flies by a little too fast, but this week on this week's episode of Oh my gosh, (laughs) what the heck is happening in Callie's life? You guys, last week I dropped the tea that I got married. This week I'm dropping the tea that I got a new dog. I think I told you guys last week I got a new dog. So that's not really new news, but we have the dog. Her name is Mermaid. She is a super cute six month sheepadoodle puppy and she is black. She has two white paws. If you follow the Instagram, you've probably seen her on my stories. My Instagram, my personal Instagram for my my like health and wellness. I have like way too many Instagram accounts, but the main one is I'm sweaty and I know it. That's where I share most of my life and stuff. So I posted a story of her and her and Axel have been getting along. They had a little scuffle today though. And I was kind of like, whenever Axel, okay. So we talked to the vet. Apparently this is normal. And please tell me if it's not. Apparently like when you get a new dog, especially a puppy, the first dog you have in your house, it can get jealous. And sometimes if it's a new puppy, it has to teach the puppy what is correct and what's not correct. So today Axel, like they were playing and all of a sudden Axel like pushed her down and starts crying and whining and it freaked me out. And I was like, oh my gosh, is Axel going to hurt her? But we talked to the vet and apparently that's very normal. And apparently it's the way that your dog is teaching the puppy how to behave. So fun dog psychology fact there. But anyways, I feel like I'm a parent. I'm literally having to make two animals like each other. So that's been the new that's been the new project and also obviously making sure mermaid does not get into anything in her house because she's on the prowl. This girl, she's curious. She's a curious puppy girl and I love her so much. She's so snuggly and loves kisses and all the things. But yeah, that's been the update with the dogos. I've been sick also, so if you can hear it in my voice, I have a very very sore throat and I don't know what I have, but yesterday I woke up and I was like, I hadn't felt that sick since I had COVID last year. I was super achy. I had just like really bad chills. I had a fever. My throat hurt so bad. I had a raging headache and I literally slept for the entire day. And I think it was my body's sign of telling me, Callie, you need to slow down. You need to get some sleep because I've been very sleep deprived lately. I've been trying to wake up early. I've been trying to be this like productive girl but at a cost because I haven't been going to bed early enough and I haven't been getting enough sleep. And as a result, my body decided to get sick. So I slept a ton yesterday. I pressed pause and like everything I was doing. And basically I just slept the whole day. And then I slept last night and I woke up this morning. I feel so much better. It's actually insane. Like my body has been way less achy today. My throat still hurts. It's still scratchy as you probably can hear, but overall we're doing good. And I, I'm like, in such a big recovery mode because I'm actually supposed to travel on Thursday. I'm going to help with a retreat and I'm like, I cannot be sick for this. So I'm in, I'm in major healing mode and I think I'll be fine by Thursday, but that's been, that's been the update. And I feel like also for anyone who is getting over being sick or is currently sick, I don't know about you, but sometimes I struggle with feeling like I don't want to let myself rest. Like I really sometimes struggle with resting and like allowing myself to press pause and not feeling guilty for it. But I think something that really I realized yesterday is that I deserve to rest. My body deserves it. And resting is way more productive than overdoing it. So there's a fine balance with it. And I think I definitely crossed the line with overdoing it. So we're we're in rest mode. There's a season for everything, I feel like, in life, and currently in my resting week. But other than that, everything else is good. I'm celebrating John's birthday tomorrow with him. We're kind of we're probably gonna take our boat out and go fishing, and then maybe go surfing. I'm probably not gonna surf because I've been feeling sick because that would defeat the point of resting, right? <laughs> so I'll probably just watch John surf if he wants to go surfing. And also, oh my gosh, you guys, this is so random, but I, <laughs> we have a Nintendo. And so the other night we were like wanting to play a video game together. 
also I'm not really a gamer so I don't know what overcame me but I was like in the mood to play a game and I love racing games like Mario Kart I know that's not Nintendo but I was like this that I want like a Mario Kart kind of vibe we downloaded this really weird game called Extreme Snowboard it's literally so like such a simple game there's no way to exit the game once you're in it it's it's so funny like I can't even I don't even know how to describe it it's such a simple game and we found it randomly on the Nintendo like website thing and we've been we've been playing extreme snowboard so I'm very excited to play extreme snowboard later tonight but yeah I feel like my life is low-key random sometimes but other than that let's get into today's episode I hope you enjoyed the little update of my life big things big things happening as always um so I wanted to just dive I made a podcast outline by the way guys because I feel like sometimes when I record these episodes I'm like what am I talking about because I feel like I ramble but like in a good way but also it helps me to gather my thoughts on paper so I made an outline for you guys and the first point is to share my fitness story so we're gonna just kind of breeze through it because it is a pretty long story. I have an entire episode on it a while. I don't know when I recorded it last, but I have an episode kind of diving into like everything leading up to last year. And then last year we have so much more because, you know, every year there's a new thing to add to the fitness journey. But just to kind of sum things up, I used to be a competitive figure skater for most of my life. I started skating when I was two years old. I started figure skating when I was eight years old. And as you know, or I don't know if you know this, but most figure skater training is pretty intense. It's pretty high impact, a lot of plyometric exercises. Plyometrics is a lot of explosive movements. So think jumping, lunge jumps, squat jumps, training figure skating jumps off ice, jump rope, all the things. So it's a lot of it's a lot of impact training. And when I was a skater, I started to struggle with growing pains in my knees. And I developed this thing called Osgood Slaughter. And so basically underneath my kneecap, I still have them. They're little bumps. And I think it, I should look this up before recording this episode, but I'm pretty sure Osgood Slaughter is when the, I think it's when the bone grows faster than the muscle. So I was putting a lot of strain on my muscles and I was going to physical therapy at the time. And my doctors told me this is something I'm always going to struggle with is tendonitis in my knees from Ajgit Slaughter. So as a skater, it was very discouraging to be told, yeah, this is something you're always going to have to deal with. And also at the time, I couldn't do any of my training. So when I was just when I was going through this injury, basically, I had to stop off ice training. I had to stop on ice training and I was injured for a while and I remember my mom, I think I was 15 years old at the time. My mom, she found this thing called Pure Bar. And if you don't know what Pure Bar is, it's this workout studio where it's bar fitness. So bar is a combination of yoga, Pilates, and ballet. It's literally so freaking fun. And it's very low impact. So she found Pure Bar and she's like, hey, Callie, I feel like this is something that you might benefit from, you might enjoy. And it allowed me to continue strengthening my body without it being high impact. And so she had to get special permission from the studio because I was 15. I wasn't even old enough to take the class. And I remember I would literally sit in the back of the class on my phone in the middle of an ab section. First of all, you're not supposed to have your phone in class. That was that was the one. Th- oh my gosh! Looking back, I'm like, what was I doing, girl? I was on the phone in the back of the class texting my boyfriend at the time. Totally not paying attention to what I was doing in that class. But I overall loved it, and no one ever told me otherwise. So I guess I didn't disturb the class too much. So after I started my bar journey, I I continued to skate. I was able to keep skating as my injury started to improve and eventually when I was I think it was like 17 I moved to Pittsburgh I was living at Houston in Houston before that and I started skating there and I was in high school and it was my junior year of high school that I started I I think it was actually my sophomore year of high school I started to realize during all the injuries that my dream of going to the Olympics just wasn't gonna happen and it was really heartbreaking if anyone listening is an athlete and they have the huge dream of going to the olympics or playing a d1 sport a professional sport and that just didn't happen because of an injury like i know how you feel i've been there and it is really discouraging but life moves on and i moved to pittsburgh with my family 
I kept skating and during this time I started to pursue other sports. I started to do track and field. Well, I did track and field in Houston. I moved to Pittsburgh and I started to do cheerleading and I also started to really get involved in my school like socially. I was hanging out with a lot more friends than I used to when I was really a very intense training figure skater years prior and I started to just fizzle a little bit with my competitive skating career. Eventually I remember so for skating you have to take different tests to level up in different and different things so like let's say I want to compete at the novice level I would have to pass there's it's called a freestyle test and then I have to pass a moves in the field test so moves in the field are like edges and footwork and stuff so freestyles all the jumps and spins that you see on tv so anyways I was taking I think it was my junior yeah I think it was my junior moves in the field test and I had never failed a figure skating test up to up until that point and it was in Pittsburgh. I took this test and I remember I failed it and I thought my life was over and I quit the sport. I thought I quit it for good, but I eventually came back to it and I was just doing it for fun. And that is, that's a whole other thing like that. I love figure skating so, so much. And I skate here and there. I haven't skated in a while, but it was kind of during this time that I just kind of fizzled and realized I want to pursue other things in my life. So once I stopped competitively figure skating, I did notice I was going through puberty simultaneously. I kind of went through like a bit of a delayed puberty. So I think I was like 14 or 15 when I got my period. I don't really remember, but I, I remember, I think it was 15 when I got my period. So it was a little bit delayed and I started going through puberty and I started gaining some weight. And also as someone in high school, I really, really was going through it with my body image. I remember I would facetune most of my photos I remember I'd compare myself to so many girls in my school, people online. I struggled a lot with body image and comparison and self-esteem. And during this time, I started to do a lot of research about how to lose weight. And I thought that fad diets were the best thing to do because at the time, I mean, most of the stuff out there online was about dieting and how dieting was the way to go. So I started to... I think (laughs) I tried to do a juice cleanse and I remember I failed at it miserably. I didn't realize the juice cleanse was for like a day and I tried to spread it out over three days and I only came to realize I was starving myself. So that first fad diet was an absolute disaster and top it off during this time I thought that the only way I could lose weight and see results was to go to the gym and work out for hours a day killing myself, doing cardio, doing a bunch of just different hit workouts, lifting, putting so much strain on my body because I was trying to do what everyone else was doing. And I thought that that was the only way to see results. I did enjoy going to the gym. Don't get me wrong. I thought it was really fun. It was a fun social activity, but that kind of movement did not do my body great things. It definitely put a lot of strain on my knees. As I mentioned, I already struggle with chronic tendonitis in my knees. So I definitely doing squat, heavyweight squats and all that stuff, running on the treadmill. My knees did struggle and I did feel like my body became really bloated from that over exercising because it can put a lot of stress on the body when you're doing too much. And so it was when I went to college, I think, I think I was like 17 in college, that my obsession with my body became even worse. So if you didn't already know this, I go to school, or I'm acting like I'm still in college. I went to school at the University of Miami, and there was definitely a lot of pressure and comparison that I struggled with in school my freshman and sophomore year so I remember everyone I got arrived to school and I was like oh my gosh everyone here looks actually perfect like what the heck literally in Miami pretty much in a bikini year round and I definitely struggled a lot because I wasn't secure in who I was and I remember this is a totally like unrelated thing or kind of is related. I was dating this guy in high school and I remember when I was touring Miami, I posted this photo in a bikini and I remember I'd face in the photo and him and his friends, I guess, had seen the photo and were like, you like said something about me looking chubby or chunky and I remember it hurt my feelings so so bad so going into college I definitely was feeling pretty insecure and I continued with my just exercising 
mania mania yeah, mania is the word and also on top of that i continued to try fad diets so i think it was like the su- like my summer of my freshman year i tried keto ended up giving myself what i thought was ibs i still to this day don't know what happened to my stomach i went to gi doctors after that summer because you guys not to be tmi but literally i could not stomach food like every single thing i would eat i would like literally poop my pants and it was yeah it was crazy so my experience with keto was also very negative and it's just so much more harm than good to my body I feel like this story is kind of long but it was my sophomore year and I moved off campus and I remember my apartment was near a pure bar studio so at this time I was still going to the gym I was still doing all those gym workouts but I was needing a job I want I really okay I wasn't needing a job, but I really wanted a job. I've, I've always loved working. And I went into the studio and I was like, hey, I'm really interested in teaching at Pure Bar. How, do, how does that work? Are you guys hiring? And I remember they were like, yeah, we're actually looking for instructors. Let's be real. Navigating your 20s can be tough. After graduating college two years ago, my mental health was very tested. I dealt with a breakup, moved across the country several times, struggled with social anxiety, making friends, and of course, doing my taxes. No one talks about how hard this season can be on the mental health, and that's why Headspace has been changing the game for me. Headspace helps improve mental well-being through guided meditations, mindfulness practices, breathing and calming exercises, and so much more. These tools can help reduce stress, boost your mood, and help you sleep better whether you're at home or on the go. I'm obsessed with Headspace's walking meditations anytime I need to get out of my workflow and just take a step outside or one of their meditations for stress like the feeling powerless one super good and I also love their ocean breathing meditation. Headspace has helped me and more than a hundred million people worldwide. They can help you too. Listen up, you do not want to miss this. I've arranged something special. For a limited time, all of you can try Headspace free for 60 days by going to headspace.com slash Cali60. You won't find this offer anywhere else. You must use my link H-E-A-D-S-P-A-C-E dot com slash Cali60 to unlock all of Headspace free for 60 days. This is not something they normally do. Headspace.com slash Cali60. So basically, I got my certification through Pure Bar and it was a weekend training experience in Denver. They flew me out to it and then I'd have to do this whole testing out process to make sure I was prepared to teach classes to clients and I went through it all and it was an absolutely incredible experience. I learned so much and I truly, truly accredit Pure Bar for everything I know because their certification process was absolutely incredible and they taught me so much about teaching fitness and how the human body works. So I became a fitness instructor at Pure Bar my sophomore year of college. And this is the first time that I started to see clients coming in who were not looking to just simply lose weight. I was seeing clients who were coming in because they truly loved working out. They loved Pure Bar. They loved how it improved their mental health. And I all of a sudden was exposed to this different world and different side of fitness. And I was like, oh my gosh, wait, so... It is possible to enjoy working out and not hating your body and trying to hate your body into a body that you love. Like it's possible to do something you really actually enjoy. And so this kind of sparked a little, this planted a seed in my mind. And over the course of a year, I definitely started to improve my image, my, my relationship with my body. And I started a blog, hence the name I'm sweaty and I know it. So I was really passionate now about health and wellness and all the things, motivation, mental health, physical health. And I started my blog. And then in 2020 is when everything went online. So this was a whole new thing because I'd been going to the gym. I'd been going to taking pure bar classes and now literally everything was online. Also, at the same time, I'd started to become certified in Pilates. So I was starting to apply certification process and program in Miami. And now that everything was online, I was this weird like, okay, so my job's in fitness, like what's going to happen? And I remember at the Pilates studio, so the Pilates studio I taught at in the future um, was a reformer studio. And the owner was like, hey, so Callie knows how to teach floor exercises because she's just bar. Let's see if she wants to teach these online classes for us. And so all of a sudden I'm teaching online pure bar classes, online Pilates classes, and 
I had this blog happening at the same time and I realized how much I loved teaching online classes. So I started teaching my friends online classes via Zoom, like private workout classes. I started teaching online classes on my Instagram, Instagram lives at my I'm Sweaty Note account. I started posting online TikTok workouts and I started a YouTube channel. I went kind of balls to the walls here, but I was obsessed. And during this time, I also started going on walks. I was still in college. And so I had like three hour, I think I had like a three hour law of entrepreneurship class or something. And I remember I'd go on really, really long walks through the neighborhood while listening to my classes. And I all of a sudden started seeing these just absolutely incredible results in my body. And also my mental health. I just felt so much better mentally after I go on walks because most of us were struggling during this time and I was struggling with anxiety. I was depressed. I was by myself in an apartment, freaking quarantined. And the walks would seriously boost my entire mood and my day. And to top it off, doing the workouts, I remember doing the Pilates and bar workouts just at home on the mat with light resistance and equipment. And I was absolutely obsessed. I felt so strong, so good in my body. And I was like, literally doing shorter workouts is a game changer. Because at the time, before that, I'd been doing workouts that were like 50 minutes plus, And all of the online stuff was like 45 minutes, 30 minutes. And I was like, this is absolutely incredible. My body feels so, so good and so strong. And that's kind of when a flip in my brain switched. And I had also at this time become, I think it was the next year, I started getting into intuitive eating. I got into just living my lifestyle intuitively, working out intuitively. Because during COVID, I really learned like listening to my body and working with my body, not against it, is a game changer. And I see the best results of my life and I feel good. I can stay consistent with my workouts and it's actually fun for me. So the next year, I got certified as a holistic health coach because I am so passionate about health health and wellness and I wanted to help other people who were starting their journeys. And so I just dove even further into learning all things wellness. And around this time is when I had friends telling me, hey, have you ever thought about doing an online studio? And I was doing YouTube at the time. So I was doing my holistic health coaching one-on-one with clients. I was still in college. I was doing social media and marketing for all, like for a friend's company, for a Blahi studio, all this stuff. I was doing so much at the time. And I remember I was like really, really afraid to start my own business. And my online studio, I was really afraid to start it because everything this time had been pretty much just free for all. I'd been charging absolutely nothing for anything except for the health coaching I was charging my clients. Even that was pretty, I was charging not that much for that. And I remember I was so afraid to start my own studio. But finally, one day I was like, like, what, what, what do I have to lose? I mean, honestly, the up cost of starting a studio online is so low. I have a community of people who love my workouts. I have people who are just pushing me to do this. Like, I'm going to start it. So I graduated from college and I continued to teach at my local Pilates studio. I stopped teaching at the bar studio after college because I was no longer living close to it. And I was teaching private Pilates classes. I was doing a, I was working at a public relations firm and I was also simultaneously starting to build Sweaty Studio, which is my online Pilates studio. So I was very, I was a very busy girl. And during this time is when my health and wellness journey and my mental health just plummeted. So something that I really have learned during the entire process of my fitness journey and health and wellness journey is that it goes in waves. It's like a roller coaster. Sometimes I'm at a high, sometimes I'm at a low. And I've just learned to not get discouraged if I ever have a season where I'm struggling because it's always going to go up again. And this is the perfect example is when I struggled a lot after college. Postgrad's freaking tough. The adjustment is so, tr- so tough. And if you just graduate college, like give yourself some grace because it is a learning experience. You're <laughs> thrown into the real world and you're like, what is happening? And I definitely was struggling. I went through a breakup of, as I mentioned before, my breakup of like four years. And I also had just gotten a new dog and I was, I just moved to a new apartment. I started a new job and I literally felt so freaking overwhelmed. Like I just remember, I was like, what am I doing? And my mental health, like my anxiety just started to get out of control I would be having panic attacks like every single day on the floor and I just I started to feel really depressed 
I just didn't, I don't know. I just didn't feel like I'd wake up in the morning and just not be excited for life. And it was really hard for me to get out of bed. But thankfully I had Axel, my sheep doodle number one. And he kind of forced me to get up because he was a puppy and I had to take care of him. So that helped me a lot during this time. But also during this time, I also want to throw out a little trigger warning here. I am going to talk about an eating disorder, just fly over it, not go too deep into it, but just throw out a trigger warning for anyone. So during this time, I did start to struggle with an eating disorder. I found myself, it started with me skipping lunch and I also was taking Adderall. So I found that my appetite just, it completely shrunk. I was skipping lunch. I was working literally all day long. I was not taking care of myself. And before I knew it, I was struggling with an eating disorder. And I just do want to like put it out there that sometimes eating disorders really do sneak up on you. As a skater, I had friends who went through pretty severe eating disorder struggles and I was always very aware of it. And I never thought I would struggle with an eating disorder, but it kind of snuck up on me. And before I knew it, I was struggling with one. And I found myself when I was taking my own Pilates workouts or teaching a Pilates workout that I was really having a hard time getting through even like a 15 minute class. My energy levels were shot. I just didn't feel like myself. I felt like I would kind of just be flying through the day, not present at all. And it was a really tough season of my life. I was also healing emotionally and I was navigating a lot of change. And so I definitely give myself grace for this period of my life because it was challenging. And my fitness journey definitely did suffer a lot because I wasn't taking care of myself whatsoever. And then the healing process on top of that was a whole other ball game. I started going to a therapist and I started to just eat with food freedom. And I started to just not, I started to be very like mindful where I wouldn't, I wouldn't give myself boundaries with food. I would eat whatever I wanted and I would do my best to not feel guilty for it. I started to make sure that I would go to Trader Joe's and get a lot of frozen foods and make sure I always had a stocked up fridge. I'd have quick and easy meals ready to go. I, so this is now we've gotten into summer, last year summer. I stopped taking Adderall. I realized Adderall was doing absolutely no good for me. It was harming me in the long run. It was harming my health. It was harming my body and my appetite. And I didn't want that inside of me. So I stopped taking Adderall and I eventually stopped taking any other medications as well, just because I was kind of like, I don't know, I'm not anti-medicine, but I was like, I don't really want all this stuff in my body, like altering who I am. So I eventually got off just all my antidepressants, Adderall, all this stuff. And I really just focused on healing and I focused on healing inside and out. So I focused on healing my spiritual journey. So I got really, really close to God. And I've talked about this in my testimony. It's a whole other episode. And that honestly was a game changer for me. I started to learn my worth because I realized that God literally sent his son to die on the cross for me so that he could have a relationship with me. And he created me and knew me before I was even born. And there's like a whole Bible verse, like he knit me together in my mother's womb. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. And I just started just just reading scripture. I realized truly how how worthy I am and how beautiful my body is and no matter where I am in my weight no matter where I am in my age or in my journey like my body is absolutely beautiful because God created me in his image and there's so much more to life than how our bodies look and I really learned that the most important thing with our health and wellness is truly just taking care of ourselves like you would take care of best friend and talking to yourself like a best friend. So moving into kind of figuring out what will work for you in terms of your fitness journey, my best advice is shop around. Just trying out different workouts, trying out different things and seeing what sticks, what you enjoy. So for me, low impact workouts made my body feel so good and they still make my body feel so freaking good. And also giving yourself a realistic amount of exercise each week. So I know that there's different guidelines out there on how much exercise you need to have a week definitely reference those because they are really helpful but I will say that sometimes it's easier to start with a smaller number and ease up to it so if you know you have a really busy schedule 
just even popping in a 15 minute workout or a five minute workout on the daily, sticking with it for a week, proving to yourself that you can stay consistent and then adding on is going to be so much more beneficial than if you start just like crazy amounts of exercise you stick with it for three days and then you have a really just an overwhelming day of work and you have to stop and you don't have time to work out and then you fall for your routine and then it's just this whole cycle. So I always say just start small because like proving to yourself, building that trust with yourself is truly so, so valuable with any, any journey that you're going on. And also to just say like working with your body in your workouts I have really been into cycle syncing my workouts. I didn't even mention that in my fitness journey, but I've really gotten into cycle syncing. So basically that's when you work out with your menstrual cycle. As women who are premenopause, we go through four different phases every single month. Unless you're on a hormonal birth control, it's a little bit different for you, but you can still cycle sync. And if you have questions about that, feel free to just reach out to me at any point on Instagram and I can I can help you with that. But Basically, the cycles are, the phases are, you have your menstrual phase, which is your period, follicular phase after your period. It's when your energy levels are beginning to increase as your body prepares for ovulation. Ovulatory phase is when you ovulate, when your body releases that egg, you're going to feel really high energy, a lot of confidence, all that stuff. And then the luteal phase is after the ovulatory and it's a pretty long phase. And I divide into two parts. The first part, you still have a lot of energy, but the second part, it's typically like the week or two before your period and you may be feeling like a little lower energy, not as great and the cycle repeats. So basically the idea of cycle syncing your workouts is to plan your workouts around your energy levels and your hormone levels because I mentioned briefly like over exercising can be really harmful for your body and especially during that menstrual phase your body's already going through a lot of stress so it's important to make sure that you don't overdo it and it doesn't mean to say you have to stop, like let's say you're lifting like consistently at the gym. That doesn't mean you have to, you have to stop lifting during your period. It simply means to just lighten up a little bit. If you've been trying to add on weight during your period, I would just say stick with what your body can do and what it feels good doing that day. If you have to go a little bit lighter, don't beat yourself up for it and try to keep your workouts a little bit shorter during your menstrual phase. But if you're curious about that, I have an entire guide. I'll link it below. It's free. It's all about cycle syncing. And I have cycle syncing workouts. It's a whole workout program I have on my studio, Sweaty Studio. So that is something I'm so freaking passionate about, if you can't tell. And it has changed my entire fitness journey. And it's helped me become really, really empowered and just feel connected to who I am and to my body. So that's really key. And then also to making sure you're working with your injury if you have injuries working with your injuries if you're pregnant working with your pregnancy it's all about meeting yourself where you are and you can have goals goals are great like goals are so crucial in any journey but I will say that it's important to give yourself big goals but then give yourself realistic steps to get there don't overwhelm yourself with it. Do what you can and make sure that you take care of your body in the process. And also just finding what you're consistent with. You can stay consistent with and just keep doing that. That is literally just the best thing you can do in any any journey at all. And also too with figuring out like what workouts are best for you, I would say definitely establish what your goals are. So if your goal is to gain strength, if your goal is to gain endurance, like setting those goals and then picking workouts that will help you get to those goals. And then finally, I want to address just really fast a question that I get a lot of the time about how to become a fitness instructor. I mentioned this a little bit before in my my story, but I first got certified through Pure Bar and then I got certified through a local Pilates studio in Miami. And with certifications, it can feel overwhelming because there's just so much out there. And honestly, even with fitness in general, I was talking about this this morning with John, how overwhelming it feels sometimes when there's just like everyone preaching that everything is the is the right way, the best way. Like it can feel pretty overwhelming and discouraging at times. So if you've been feeling like that, you're so not alone in the struggle. I was feeling like that literally yesterday and I teach fitness. I was like, wait, I was second guessing everything. And it was from one freaking reel I saw. So what I will say with becoming a fitness instructor, it's important to make sure you figure out what your cup of tea is with fitness. If you have a workout you're so passionate about, I would start there. If your passion is cycling, I would go to a local cycling studio and see how to get certified in cycling. If you yeah. want to if you wanna do something that's more nationally accredited, so, okay, so basically... 
there's two different paths you can go down as a fitness instructor so there's franchises I went down that path so you can get certified through a franchise directly so like pure bar is a franchise and they have their own technique of things and then you can teach at that exact studio but if you want to go down more of like the nationally accredited route there's a lot of boutique studios that may not be a franchise and they just require a simple like nationally accredited program so there's a lot of ply studios who are maybe owned by a single owner there's only one location in the entire world and a lot of those will just take like a ply certification program off the top of my head that's a national one is balanced body i have never done balanced body so i don't know how good it is but i will say that's one that a lot of studios will take i know that equinox also does their own pilates training and i don't i don't know what I don't know if studios take that or accept that. So I would say like my best advice is to just go to the studio that you want to teach at and I would ask them what certifications do you take because in my case I wasn't sure if I'd have to get a personal trainer certification and all this other stuff and they were like we can actually just certify you ourselves. So I'd start there and if you're starting your own online fitness I would just find a program that is really, really good and goes over the anatomy of the body really well. I have taken a certification program before and they did not go on the over the anatomy nearly as well as they should have, but thankfully I had the Pure Bar certification and they went over it so, so well and I felt very confident in knowing the body, but that is one of the most important things about teaching fitness is really understanding how the muscles work together and making sure when you program your classes that you're not going to injure your client because you overdo one area of the body so making sure that the anatomy portion of the certification is really really good and also I just like really do your research and I know if you're looking to get certified in Pilates it can feel really confusing but I would just even if you can hop on a call with someone who runs a certification talk to them about it get the vibe and go from there but Anyways, I hope this episode was helpful. I hope you feel inspired and excited to start your fitness journey or continue it and level it up. I seriously had no intention of making this episode so long, but I feel like there was so much to cover and I really hope it did help you and inspire you in some sort of way. If you love the episode, feel free to leave a review. It helps the show so much and I do read the reviews and they make me smile so big. I love this community so much. Also, we have an Instagram. It's healthy but human pod. I'm about to make the Instagram popping again. I feel like I've kind of been overwhelmed <laughs> with how many social media accounts I have, but my goal this summer is to is to get the healthy but human podcast Instagram freaking popping. So follow that follow Instagram and I will see you next week on Wednesday have the best week my gorgeous queen you're awesome I hope you never think otherwise and I will see you next week bye my gorgeous queen